Hey what's up? It was quite a while since I made a proper update video for my NES game. After making the cottage I got obsessed with another hardware project. I will tell more about it at the end. So I wasn't able to make this video as soon as I would like to. Right now I'm at this point where there is not much new stuff I could share about the NES development or its architecture without getting into the tiniest details that might not be that interesting. So this video is just gonna be a generic game development log. The only difference from other devlogs on YouTube is that my game is for the NES. So if you're curious then let's go. So what have I made so far? I've added quite a few new items in the game. The very first addition was the Rowan Berries. I'm sure it's possible to tell from the sprite what it is, right? In the game they work more like a health potion than a food item. Currently it restores 10 points of health. You can constantly find this item at one spot in the map. While adding new sprites for the items I was reminded that I have duplicated animation frames in the CHR file. It kinda always bugged me. But I was reluctant to get rid of them because for that I needed to write some additional code. But I finally created a lookup table for the character animation frames and I deleted the duplicate graphics. Since I freed up some extra space in my tile set, I could finally add some attack animations for the werewolf. From now on, the werewolves can't kill the player just by touching it like they used to. Now they will try to swing their paw and it will take away one hit point per swing. Most definitely I will increase that amount later. Another new feature in the game is the item storage in your house. I always wanted to store more stuff during the day. For instance to stack up on those sticks for the night. But I was always limited by my 10 item inventory. So now you can additionally store the same amount of items at the house. You can do that with my clunky menu system. Every item in your inventory now has a store option. But where exactly are those items stored in the house? To answer this question I've decided to draw a few background tiles for the storage chest. Later I drew more tiles for this crafting table. So I guess this makes the home environment a bit more interesting. It's no longer just a completely empty room now. At the same time I was editing the indoors map I decided to improve my map editor. Now it can finally save not only the collision data files but also the map files themselves. And since I started messing with the maps I just had to make the palette attributes work. So it's finally possible to edit them. For now they are just semi-transparent colorful squares. It's not possible yet to see and edit proper palette colors for the tiles. Probably I will need to write some kind of a shader to handle different palettes. I also noticed that now there are more indoor tiles than tiles for the trees, rocks and other outdoor stuff. So I've decided to split background graphics into two separate tile sets. Whenever you go inside the house the game would switch to a bank that's meant for indoor stuff. Now it's bank 3 and the game would use an appropriate tile set that is located in that bank. It means I could no longer use house environment tiles outside. But it's not like I would need to put a bed in the middle of woods anytime soon. The only downside now is that whenever you enter the house it might take few milliseconds more to load the new tiles. Perhaps I will make a fade in animation to make a better transition. The next new feature was the character interactions with the items inside the house. Now if you would hit B in front of the fireplace the inventory will open up and you could pick some item and throw it in or maybe cook something. Same is with the storage chest and the bed. Although the bed only opens the menu where the pointer points to the sleep option. Another feature I added was the ability to drop items you no longer want. Let's say you accidentally grabbed a stick and your inventory got full and you can't pick anything else. So now you can destroy that stick by picking the option drop. 
Although you won't find the item dropped beside you when you close the menu. This item will be gone forever. So you need to choose wisely what items you want to discard. What survival game is without item crafting? So I just had to add this feature to my game. So if you pick the craft option from the menu or interact with the table at the house, you will see your inventory and there you can pick two items. Well, unfortunately, the crafting system is at the very early stages now, so you won't see what items you've selected. If the picked items are matching a certain combination from my recipe list, a completely new item will be created and placed to your inventory. So far you can create a jar of jam from two piles of rowan berries. Also I've added a completely new item that's meant only for crafting for now. Uh, that's a rock. So if you combine this rock with a stick, you would get a spear. And if you combine two rocks together, you get a knife. This leads to a next new feature, which is that now you can equip stuff. Currently the default equipped item is a knife. Every time you will run the game, it will be equipped automatically. But we can go to the menu section called equipment and unequip it. So after the knife is unequipped, if you hit the B button, the character just would swing its bare fists. So let's craft a spear. So when I select this weapon from my inventory, I get an option to equip it. And if I had something equipped already, the previously equipped item should be placed back to my inventory. Unfortunately, the spear doesn't have different graphics for now, so it would look like just another knife. The next thing I did was to add hit points for the animals, since previously you could kill them with a single hit. Also, I made that your attack strength depends on what item is equipped. So the spear now is kind of OP because it does 10 damage points. So you can kill a werewolf with a single blow. Meanwhile, you would need to stab it three times with a knife or punch it six times. Although there are several problems with the attacking because it is very hard to hit animals precisely when they move through you because they don't have a collision detection with the player's character. So even though the spear or the knife can do more damage, it is often easier to fight with your bare fists. While playing the game, I've noticed quite a few problems with the menu screen. I can't imagine how I didn't notice that it was possible to move the character while the menu was still on. Also, the werewolves can sneak up to you, avoiding all the obstacles while you're in the menu. Of course, this bug might be as a interesting feature in some kind of a horror game, but I would rather fix it. While working on the game, I really got sick of the so-called music I had. I was forced to listen to that tune over and over while fixing bugs. So I knew I need to make something better. Unfortunately, I'm a big noob when it comes to the music production. Usually I come up with something accidentally by placing some random notes together. And I don't really know how to make tunes that sound really good. Yet. Not to mention the music production on the NES is very hard by default. Like every song that you would try to produce will eventually sound annoying and squeaky. You really have to be an excellent composer. Which I'm not. I kind of try to get back into learning music theory. I watched some videos about the chord progressions and after hundreds of attempts I finally had three tracks that I could add to my game. They are nothing really special but they are the best I've got. The short one is for the title screen. The second one is the remastered version of the Outdoors tune.
And I also created a new song for indoors. The two new songs ate away 2 kilobytes from my main memory bank. So there's another difficulty component though. Songs must be as small as possible. So yeah, that's all the new changes for now. Hopefully there are a lot of more to come. I still need to polish the combat so it'd be more fun. I definitely need to add some attack damage feedback for the animals. Some kind of a fun animation like an ice climber or at least some blinking. And most definitely I need to balance things out. So if you want to see the changes for yourself, you can get the ROM from my Git repository. I've put the links in the description. So let's talk about the project I mentioned at the beginning. I got really obsessed with making a gamepad PCB for my very first Famiclone console. Like it took way more work than I was anticipating at the start. So I had this homemade PCB that still doesn't work like it's supposed to. So I still need to put more work. So that's probably gonna be a topic for the next video. Also I'm planning to make a video where I create a very basic NES application from start to the end. And as always there should be more update videos of my NES survival game. So if you're interested then please subscribe to the channel so you won't miss all this new stuff. So that's it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.